Oh, the year I hear was rising and the gin was getting low. I scarcely think we're gonna get a little drink till we get to Buffalo. Get to Buffalo. Two days out from Syracuse, the vessel struck a shoal. We like to all be found a road on chunk of lack of on a coal. Oh, the year I hear was rising and the gin was. <laughs> well, hi. This is Jack Byer, your American narrowboater. Today is September the 7th. It's been exactly a month since my brothers and I began our cruise on the Erie Canal. Uh, today it's a very nice, balmy, su sunny day in Crystal Beach, Florida. Um, behind me you'll see our parking, or part of the park in Crystal Beach. And I'm walking out on our community pier where I thought I'd have some nice, quiet place to shoot this vlog. What I wanted to talk about today was the Erie Canal and my experiences on it. Frankly, um, I've had some difficulty putting this one together because I wanted to stay as positive as I could. So first of all, I need to tell you, I am biased. I am biased because uh, my family and I, we have been on, on the English canal system since the 1970s. You know, our, our boys spent many of their summers growing up on the, on the uh, English canal system. We've experienced the narrowboat lifestyle. It's, uh, it's real. I mean, you do have a lifestyle feel, a narrowboat experience feel where you share a common bond with the other people on other narrowboats. What you're hearing now is the uh, community church behind me. I don't know what time it is. I guess it's about 10. Anyway, the narrowboat lifestyle, as I see it, is a community, a feeling of community for those fellow boaters who, who ply the waterways of England, share a common experience, and enjoy the cruise. There is no narrow boat experience on the Erie Canal, and so that's where my prejudice is. What the Erie Canal is, and I'm gonna show it to you, I did a sl uh, time lapse of the Erie Canal. Uh, picture a, a canyon of trees. You're on a waterway that's totally surrounded on both sides by a forest of deciduous trees impenetrable. Now about 10 to 15 percent of the of the uh, canal you do get to see something. It might be a brief glimpse of a towpath. It might be uh, a fish shack hidden up in the corner. It might be an old factory. Uh, in one case we came across a large lake that the Erie Canal went across and yeah we saw a lot of fish shanties and uh, retirement cabins but basically 90% of it, you're, you're going down a canyon of trees. So there isn't no beautiful pastoral scenes like you have in England. You don't have the historic buildings or going through a, a classic city setting like you do in England. And frankly, I missed that. And I was hoping to see something like it. Let's go over briefly just a few of the rules on the Erie Canal that'll show you the difference. First of all, you don't moor. You're not allowed to moor, and you're not allowed to put your anchor down anywhere on a canal system in New York State. You can only moor where there are town moorings, where there are established moorings, or if you own a, a cabin, you can moor there. Uh, marinas are very few. And yes, you can moor to marina. The narrow boat we were on was a typical narrow boat, as you would have in England. It's, you know, a steel boat with a flat bottom. Uh, ours was 44 feet long and uh, nine feet wide. It was sort of like a modified narrow boat. Uh, we enjoyed it. Next, when you're on the Erie Canal, you're basically cruising from mooring to mooring, because all of the boats, including the narrow boats we were on, depend upon shore power at night. 
our boat, which even though it had a 63 uh, horsepower diesel motor with two alternators, uh, three leisure batteries and a starter battery, did not produce enough power during the day to, to power the boat at night, according to the owner. So he put that requirement in that each night we had to get to a town mooring. And we would have had to anyway, because you can't moor anywhere but a town mooring. So the cruise came down to being basically a, a trip from town mooring to town <laughs> mooring. Now we did, we did come into some fun places. We did see some lovely towns and we met a lot of wonderful people. Um, the, the lock, all of the locks are mechanical, uh, huge locks. They're all operated by what they call CSOs. Well, we call them lock masters, but a CSO stands for Canal Structures Operator. That's who runs all the locks on the Erie Canal and in the uh, New York Canal system. Now in England, when you're canal boating, you have these beautiful pastoral you know, scenery, farms and mansions up on a hill and idyllic villages full of old world charm. You don't have any of that on the Erie Canal. You're going into one, one city after another and these cities by and large um, have lost their economic vibrancy because the canal traffic has stopped. While we are on a canal during any given day as we're cruising, we might pass two boats, three at the most. You're hearing a Coast Guard helicopter. Some of the towns that we entered are suburbs of major cities. Uh, towns of Newark, the town of Fairport. These are all suburbs of Rochester, New York. They're very uh, up, upscale, <laughs> very affluent towns and uh, beautiful old restored homes and they really were nice let's talk about some of the other biggest the big differences between the Erie Canal and what we're used to in England uh, towpath you know in the UK the towpath is an integral part of the experience you're almost constantly following or having a towpath along the side of the canal that you see you see bikers you see walkers you see people taking their dogs you see people picnicking the towpath is an integral part of the canal life that's not so with the erie very rarely can you see a towpath on the erie canal uh, i've been told that there's one that runs the whole length but you sure couldn't tell it from the canal um, every once in a while i'd say maybe five percent or one one to five percent of the time you're going to come across, um, you know, a glimpse of the canal with the towpath and there's a biker on it and, or there's a little uh, starting point or uh, exercise or parking point for people who want to get on the, the uh, towpath with their bicycles. But by and large, 95% of the time, at least, you never even know there's a towpath there. So there's a major difference between Erie and the UK. Uh, the other is, the uh, lock keepers, <laughs> because there's no traffic on the Erie Canal, uh, all commercial traffic is practically stopped. And when you see another boat, most of the time they're the big yachts or they're very big cruisers. Every, you know, and you'll also see fishermen. Um, most of the time they're stopped and they're just fishing, but uh, very, few, very, very few other people are on the canal using it while you're there. So when you get to a lock, here's this massive structure built in 1915 and the uh, lock keepers or CSOs, they're kind of lonely. They haven't had any business. They haven't had to work and move the machinery. So they're anxious to talk. They come out and they'll chat you up unbelievably. <laughs> now the problem with that, <laughs> and I'll, I'll show you a lock, at both ends of the lock, there's a control house. And in the floor of the lock, there's two sets of paddles or gates that let the water in or let the water out. So when you enter a lock, the operator is at one end, either closing the door or functioning that end. Then 
he has to walk up to the other end of the canal, other end of the lock, excuse me, and then operate his functions from there. Now, if in the process he passes your boat and he stops to talk to you, you're stuck. You're there talking to him, and it's not an unpleasant conversation. That most of them are really, really fun, and they are, a, you know, a fount of knowledge. But it's best if they get the locks going and then come back and talk to you. But even then, if you let the conversation drag on and the lock fills or the lock empties, it's a while before they walk down to the other end of the lock and open it up for you. Okay, in this time lapse, you're going to see the uh, little sh telephone booth-like thing at both ends. There's one there, then there's this guy, and then down at the other end, you'll see the other booth. He has to uh, close these gates with this near booth, and then he walks down to the other end of the lock, to that other booth, and that's where he closes it up. A little bit of cavitation here in the well on the walls, but uh, you're going to see he'll open up the lock pretty soon, and out we'll come. Okay, he's going to close the locks behind us. There he goes. And this is fast forward, and look how slow it seems to go. Uh, I wish you could hear the original soundtrack, uh, but under fast forward you can't. Uh, if you could, you'd hear them go boom as they as they connect. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to see him go down to the other little booth. And the, under the floor here are all of the uh, paddles and gates to let the water out and let the water in. This far booth lets the water in, so... Uh, town moorings. Like I told you, you've got to be in a town mooring every night because there's no mooring along the, the canal. You've got to be at a landing. And some of them have walls. Uh, call them a seawall, but they're not. Like a brick wall uh, along the canal that you, you moor up to. Uh, we ran into a few, especially in the town of Newark and in the town of Lyons, where the wall was higher than the gunnel of the boat by about five feet. So trying to climb up on that wall presented a problem. In, in the case of Lyons and in Newark, what we had to do was uh, go around to the, the off side of the boat where there's a stirrup that you could stand on and get up on the roof. And then you walk across the roof and jump up on the wall. It just was inconvenient. Uh, it's not like it's not like in the UK where all you the worst case is you have to put a gangplank down. Uh, nope, you can't do that there. Another thing uh, it would not be a fair assessment if I didn't talk about the people we met along the way. I've got a lot of footage that I hope to share in a future vlog with you. Uh, by and large, I know I'm prejudiced because I'm a Yank. They were wonderful people, salt of the earth type folks that we really enjoyed talking to. Uh, the harbors, most of the harbors have a harbor master and you have to check your boat in at night when you get there and in the case of Fairport there was a $17 charge for overnight. But most of the harbors have showers, they've got uh, shore power of course, water points and garbage collection. They've got all of the facilities that you might want. Uh, Fairport particularly was, was a very wonderful town. And in either this vlog or a future vlog, I'll show you parts of Fairport. By the way, that's where my daughter-in-law, Bree, <laughs> grew up in. And uh, she was very, when I was there, she had sent me a text saying, you know, Dad, please, this is my address in my house. If you get a chance, stop by and take a photo. And uh, I didn't. It was just too hot. And uh, I would have had to walk like two or three miles to get to her place. Sorry, Bree, didn't do that one. Uh, another thing about the Erie Canal, everything is bigger. There is a current, not much, maybe a knot, knot and a half going from west to east. Uh, the canal, I would compare the can size of the canal to the Severn River between Tewksbury and, um, say, Worcester. It's, it's wide, um, but the, now picture that same river with 100 foot tall trees, densely packed so you couldn't see anything but the trees. And now you've got the Erie Canal. Locks are bigger. The locks are huge. And 
we only had to share a lock twice. Most of the time we're in, we're in this little boat just dwarfed alongside. And you do have to have gloves on the area canal because uh, you have to hold yourself against the side of the lock so that you don't get banged around. And uh, on the canal locks, there are either a, a pipe coming down to hold on to, or there's a series of ropes or there's a series of uh, cables that are encased in polyurethane casing. So you have to have a you know set of gloves, otherwise you're gonna get some real dirty hands. Overall, I guess my advice is, um, if you're looking for the narrowboat experience, you're not gonna find it on the Erie Canal. If you're looking for a cruise, a sightseeing cruise from town to town, you're gonna get it. Uh, most of the towns you're not going to want to stop in. Now, once you get past Newark, Newark and Fairport, and, and uh, what is this start? Starts with an H. Uh, I'll put that name down there. And uh, there are a few others down that that are really nice. And you get past Spencerport, and there are no more locks for the last I don't know maybe 20, 30 miles of the canal. All you come across are lift bridges. And uh, they're the kind of lift bridge where both ends go up. I'm gonna put up a video of that later I'm, because they had one in Fairport that I took a picture of. I guess that's it. I'm gonna wind this up. This is Jack Byer, your American narrowboater, saying thanks for watching. <laughs> but and, we still enjoyed ourselves, my brothers and I, we always do, but we're looking forward to getting back to the UK next summer and hopefully We'll get back to the narrowboat lifestyle. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button down below. If you want to see when the next one comes up, hit the notification bell. And please feel free to subscribe. We love subscribers. And also, even more than any of that, love your comments. So just put your comments down there. If you disagreed with my uh, presentation of the Erie Canal, or just let me know one way or the other. Thanks for watching. This is Jack. Have a nice day.